So uh, we are going to proceed forward with our next uh, uh, presentation. So we've got uh, next up, uh, Professor Miguel Gomez. He's the Robert G. Tobin Professor uh, in the Charles H. Dyson School of Management. Sorry, the Robert G. Tobin Professor of Marketing, Food Marketing in the Charles H. Dyson School of Applied Economics and Management. He's also the director of the Food Industry Management Program uh, here in, this, in the school. So Dr. Gomez's research focuses on interrelated areas under the umbrella of food marketing, distribution, uh, and he uh, works you know, with respect to supply chain competitiveness, retailing and channel relationships and sustainability. So today he's going to speak with us about strategies to reduce farm level food waste, uh, specifically looking at food banks uh, gleaning programs. So let me... Uh, Make sure we've got, Miguel, if you're here, you can go ahead and uh, yeah. share your screen. Thank you, Aaron. I'm going to share the screen and please let me, let, let me know if you don't listen to me well or if, uh, if there is anything wrong here. So I'm just going to swap this. I hope everybody can see there. Perfect. Perfect. That okay. Okay. So uh, I'm going to share with you an, uh, an operational analysis of uh, food bank cleaning programs. And this work stems from my interest in, in, in looking at emerging business models for profit and not for profit, linking the commercial supply chain at all levels, from retailing to wholesaling, to production, to manufacturing, to the non-commercial food supply chain uh, who, uh, with objective to deliver food for those in need for food insecure. And this basically uh, stems from the, uh, from the objective of addressing two problems at the time, reducing food insecurity and reducing food loss at the same time. And this is work with my, co my colleagues. So first, what is gleaning? In this case, we are going to focus on the farm level. Gleaning, first, uh, is a definition is collecting food, mostly fresh fruits and vegetables by volunteer gleaners from what is left in the fields after har harvest and donating these, uh, these goods to food banks or pantries that service the poor or needy. And it has been the object of art, does it, like in this case. Uh, gleaning programs are, gain, have gained importance in the, ten, in the past 10 years. Volunteers, for example, here are some pictures of volunteers cleaning potatoes for the food bank of the Southern Tier here in New York. We see here um, apple glean at a farm in Boston, Massachusetts, very strong gleaning programs there. Then you bring all the, that produce to the warehouses of the food banks, which is a, it's a very sophisticated operation. And I like this picture because we think about food banks as, as, as maybe a just a small warehouse. And no, this is like any warehouse of any modern retailer uh, to the any model distribution center for retail. So the, this is food is collected there and then volunteers uh, repack and sort the fruit to deliver to those in need. So gleaning benefits, very clearly, particularly in fresh fruits and vegetables is to improve the nutritional status of food insecure individuals. One concern about food banks is that uh, excess of distribution of High, uh, high energy density and high level of fats and pre-packaged foods because they are easier to storage. So there is an effort to include more, a more mixed uh, product assortment. Uh, we know that food insecurity is still a problem in the US, about 10% 2021 uh, due, due to lack, lack of access to healthy diet. There are problems, uh, micronutrient malnutrition and other problems or other or types of problems. <clears throat> 30 to 40% of edible food produced for human consumption in the US is lost this year. This is the most recent. And fresh produce, about 20% of the, the changes from calculation to calculation is low for total food. And when you think about fresh produce, about 20% is not harvested because of cosmetic blemishes or the or the, the harvest including come and every, everything wasn't, they came and every, uh, not everything was mature to pick up or mechanical harvest, lots of market, et cetera. So 
But 10 days, 10, 10 days, 10 years ago, many states and, uh, and uh, many food banks launched pilot programs to glean fresh produce. And they were very successful. Today, there is even a national organization and there is a, 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 there is a, a census of about over 130 organizations actively, uh, actively engaging gleaning all in the US. So, but these are, this, uh, this is a complex operation because there is a lot of uncertainty because there is a lot of uh, uncertainty regarding the timing of the harvest. There is uncertainty regarding how much is there going to be in a, a farm to, to collect? What is the farmer's willingness to donate or to call a food bank to say, I have, uh, I have a gleaning product here. And also there is uncertainty on the availability of volunteer cleaners. So if you add all these, uh, all these uncertainties, it's a perfect uh, problem to apply for, a, for an operational problem. How do you optimize? How do you make these, these, uh, these operations uh, more, more effective? So our research question is how can food banks implement effective and efficient gleaning operations? And uh, I'm not going to talk about the model in particular, but these are typical in operations management, industrial engineering programs to optimize, optimize operations. So I will, I will give you the elements of, the, of our program, in this case for banks uh, in, in graphs. So we have the food bank in a region, we have farms and we have different products. And we have these individuals that are volunteers, these little blue guys. So what the procedure is the following, what we are going to do here in terms of the operations. So uh, here is the food bank that is going to collect the data. So a farm is going to call the food bank with a gleaning opportunity. Then the food bank will schedule this gleaning trip. And there are different, different types of scheduling opportunities. Then the food bank is going to broadcast the time and place for volunteer group to come. And then uh, each volunteer cleaner decides whether or not to attend. There is a probability of they attend and then some will go. They go do the work. This usually takes three, four hours. They finish, they bring the product to a food bank and then you typically, these gleaners go to a, what we call rest area because they don't come the next time there is a gleaning schedule because people don't do it all the time. There is a probability that they will attend, okay? So, uh, so and eventually what is going, they, they, are, they don't go back to a pool, but, but over time, randomly they will become again available for uh, as part of the, of the volunteers pool. So this is a problem with a lot of, lot of uncertainty. So what we do, and this is again the problem in a graph, which I'm, I'm going to skip. I'll just leave it here for those interested. So we do a field study on how to better schedule um, gleaning trips that maximize the volume collected. Here we are not minimizing cost, but to maximize the volume collected. And we work with the Food Bank of the Southern Tier here in New York. We use data from the census of agriculture and we use data on productivity and volunteer gleaning characteristics from Boston, Boston area gleaners for, to do a simulation parameter. So we apply this in our, uh, this is the region where we work, this, uh, these six counties in New York. And we focus according to this food bank, they glean mostly five products. And, and the, the hardest window for these products is different. So we have cabbage, T is days, you know, usually starts in June and we need to know these harvest calendars because they will have impact on how good or bad the programming is. So you see different, different uh, apples, for example, usually come late, cabbage is pretty much all around the place, uh, all around is, uh, is all over, all the harvest season is longer, etc. You have sweet corn, potatoes and onions for this. This is active season, late season, which is different for each crop, which adds more complexity. Then uh, I'm going to show you the, the results that we found. And basically our problem is, you know, how much, uh, how, uh, how many days do I schedule 
should I schedule only one day a week or seven days per week? And what is the impact on my service levels and on the volume of product that I am able to collect with the farms, given all this uncertainty? So, so we do it for individual commodities and for total. So this one is only, only scheduled one trip per week and seven is one every week, the other schedule. And our measure of performance is what we call, ser call service level is calls gleaned over the calls that arrive to the food bank. So we see that if we schedule only one, we, we one a slot, slot per week, we glean very little. Our service levels are 25%. So that means one out of four calls are going to be attended. If we increase, of course, in the number of the, the, the slots per week, uh, we will have service levels reaching almost uh, 80, 90%, and this again using data. So what is more important, this makes sense, but what's more important because what the, the food bank cares about is that we are able to collect as much as we can. So less is wasted, more is available for our, for, for our, for our, for the customers of the food bank or for the beneficiaries of food assistance programs. So here is the, for the, but for the for the, for the food banking in the southern tier, so this is the pounds collected, and this is the appointment appointment capacity and with slots per week. You know, this is again the scheduling possibilities, and we see that if we look at the total, it first it changes from product to product. Uh, but what is interesting is that is that you see that there is a rapid. The more you increase days per week in the schedule, then your ability to collect more, but then increases, but then at some point it becomes flat and then even decreases the, the number of pounds. And this is due, even though you have more trips, you have less capacity in terms of gleaning, uh, gleaning volunteers and uh, uh, to, to be able to, to, be able to each trip is becoming a little bit more, less inefficient in terms of the amount of product that you collect according to our model. So another me metric that is important is, um, is this is the, the call versus <clears throat> service level. This, uh, this is uh, the trade-off here, sorry, is increasing calls, uh, service levels can decrease the volume that is more gleaning trips can result in less volume glean. So no, is the same as in production, you know, uh, maximizing productivity per acre doesn't necessarily maximize in profits. In these cases, maximizing the amount of trips, taking into account that they are costly also for the, for the food bank, uh, doesn't mean that you are going to collect more, okay? The other aspect that we see here is, uh, is that, uh, is that the, we are very interested also in terms of the product mix that we collect. Is the percentage of expected volume glean from each crop type was interesting because you cannot offer only onions or only cabbage. And given that these crops come at different times, uh, you need to schedule your your appointment capacity to serve the, the farm so that you you get a good uh, good uh, good mix so for example uh, we see for example in terms of uh, if you schedule two little appointments one one once per week then you tend to have much more apples and less sweet corn but if you schedule more frequently seven each day seven days a week you are going to collect less apples and more sweet corn. Why? Because apples is a late harvest season. At that time, you know, in English, it will mean that you will have less uh, gleaners available because they are more tired. They, they will be more at rest. So, so all these things are, are helping this operational model. Hmm? So gleaning schedule can be used as a tool also to alter product mix and it can be used to increase or decrease the volume of a crop in high or low demand respectively. So the other thing is that we, we found the, the eagerness paradox. You know, these leaners are very excited, are, 
are, are very willing to go. And it's interesting that we find that the expected total volume glean versus uh, several levels of gleaner eagerness. So for example, in this case, you know, this is, a, this is the probability that a volunteer in the list is going to, is going to participate in a gleaning trip. You know, this is low, this is high, yeah? So you see that, uh, that the, the meaning that you are more eager doesn't mean that the food bank, if you have more eager volunteers, doesn't mean that you are going to collect more pounds. Uh, so there is a sweet spot here <clears throat> at different, di different levels of scheduling per week that you are going to increase significantly uh, your, your amount of collections. Uh, and that means that basically because increasing eagerness in this case may lead to inefficient gleaner capacity allocation. Uh, in the sense that if you have too many gleaners going to there may be not much to collect. They may go a lot at, at the beginning of the gleaning season, less at the end of the season, et cetera. So, so that's also information that can help, uh, help uh, food banks increase the volume, uh, increase the volume of uh, product gleaning and reducing food waste at the farm level. Uh, so we did several simulations here that I, I'm not going to go into the details, but basically, yes, in, if you include the pool size of your cleaners, if you recruit more volunteers, you will probably collect many more, you know, many more, uh, much more pounds of product. So, so efforts can go there. Uh, and uh, improving uh, performance, for example, is expected total volume when the number of dinner per treat is capped. We say, you know, some, some food banks, they say they invite cleaners and they don't say, they don't limit the amount of cleaners. But if you cap the amount of cleaners in a given, in a given cleaning trip, uh, then you are, going to, uh, you are going to be much more efficient because you can save cleaners for future trips. Basically, that's what we are saying here. Yeah. Uh, if we, did a, we even did a cost benefit analysis, although the objective of the food bank is not optimize, uh, to, to optimize, pro, to maximize profits or minimize cost. But we know the, the cost of a gleaning trip is this, in terms of pounds of product collected, this is kind of a break even. So we also told the banks, you know, if you, if you schedule too frequently, your cost in, ter your cost in terms of pounds, is going to be is going to be greater than the than the than the than the pounds per tree that you will collect. So so maybe per, definitely scheduling too many uh, is not good. We found that the overall our results, depending on the food bank, is between three to four times per week during the during the greening season. So in summary, and with this I finish in twenty minutes is that gleaning can be an effective way to provide healthy food to food insecure individuals. Uh, our model, uh, we are working on, on, on having this as a decision support tool for food banks in general uh, to manage gleaning operations. And then we offer some operational in fact, in, insights, for example, call versus volume service trade-off. You know, uh, Increasing the appointment capacity can indeed be detrimental to the amount of protein, which is not, is not, it, 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 it's not uh, evident unless you do the analysis. Operating schedule alters the, alters the product mix. The dinner eagerness paradox leads to, you need to really, really uh, cap the number of dinners per trip. Uh, and this paradox, which is the, Sometimes when you have people that are very excited, it, that doesn't mean that you are going to collect more. And so I think this is, with this I finish, and I think uh, I just want to close on the huge interest on developing for-profit and non-for-profit businesses based on technology, uh, innovations to repurpose, food that is likely to be lost in the commercial supply chain, producers,
packers, wholesalers, manufacturers, retailers, to the non-commercial sector, and in uh, serving people in need. So there are there, there is a lot of talent going to that to to, to those efforts and and uh, and after interacting with food banks, these are very clever people with uh, with uh, with the uh, with the dictionary in terms of innovations to make the food supply chain more efficient and and reduce food waste while increasing food security. And with that, I finish. Thank you. I'm going to stop sharing. Thanks, Miguel. Uh, this is really fascinating. I appreciate, uh, and I'm really excited to see that you're developing it into a uh, decision support tool. Is this something, I'm just curious, maybe uh, if anyone has questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. But while we're waiting for that, I was going to ask with the decision support tool, is this something that could be rolled out across uh, more? So obviously the food bank is a national organization. Is this something they were thinking about rolling out across their, uh, across their entire franchise or, um, or is this just going to be used in the Southern tier? Yeah, no, we did this uh, only with the, with the Southern, Southern tier food bank here. Uh, but that's the next step in our research is to, is to uh, I have been discussing with several stakeholders, how can we, how can we, we, we know this is useful, how can we work with the Feeding America Network or uh, national organizations so that we can try to implement, you know, the model is, the, the model in part is relatively simple, it's just to use the model in the appropriate way so that it can become more operational for as many as food banks. That's our ultimate goal. One of the things that occurred to me as well while you're uh, talking about the different types of produce, um, obviously there's going to be significant differences in, in the level of perishability and how quickly these things need to be gleaned from farm, uh, you know, from farms. Is I guess my, my I'm, can you, I, I know you presented some of this, but maybe you can comment a bit more in terms of the sensitivity of, of the model or the sensitivity of that, uh, um, the number of optimal trips to that perishability. Is, is that a really, is there a really strong sensitivity there? Or what did you ultimately find in your model across the different products? Yeah, it is. Here in this case, we didn't have too much of that because if you saw the product with apples, onions, uh, potatoes, Sweet potato. Sweet potato was perhaps the most perishable here, but they are not highly perishable. But when you are talking about leafy greens or you know more fresh veg vegetables, then you, pro you probably you you want to avoid food waste in your food bank operation as well. So pro that will imply the perishability of the food after being harvested will imply that you need to do more, more, more trips. So that's a factor into this. More frequent trips. Mm -hmm. Got it, got it. 